Well, hello there. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Lethia Simmons. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you, you, and you to Are You Okay? Let's Oh, Are You Okay? Broadcast. Well, let's talk about it. And we're sponsored by Seven Keys to a Mother's Heart uh, Ministry. Amen. I'm excited as always and uh, we have our panelists on with us tonight our co-host is is uh, dr norris lindsay amen i think every i know everybody knows dr lindsay look you don't even have to see him but you recognize his voice as i understand even when you're out in public without even seeing him so his voice is very notable and we're excited again tonight we have prophetess Deneen wright hey prophetess wright Good that you were able to join us on tonight. We're excited. We're excited. We're excited. Uh, we have a couple more panelists coming on, so we'll just continue, just move right ahead on, and prayerfully, they will be able to join us shortly. Again, I'm not sure if you are able to view us on Facebook. I know that we should be on YouTube. I know YouTube is good, but uh, in the chat button, if you could, in the box, if you just, would you all just write some comments in our chat for us tonight and push the share button, your share button, and push the like button too as well. And I'm going to be trying to maneuver things from this end, but we're excited. We're excited. We're excited. In fact, we are back to part two. We got so engrossed in our subject during our last session two weeks ago, and we're talking about prayer. And the question was, what's, what's up? Well, let's, what's, let's pray about it. What's, what's in your heart? What's on your heart? What's in your mind? What's, you know, what's going on? And it's just amazing that even in the midst of the discussion on last week, there were things going on in our lives. I mean, just unbelievable things. But God is so awesome because even though we were focused on the broadcast, the prayers of the righteous availeth much, and God was doing his thing throughout the atmosphere. I tell you, and uh, you may hear about a little bit uh, about some of the things that transpired, but we'll see what direction God takes us on tonight. And so again, thank you for joining us on tonight. Um, write some comments in our comment section, push that like button, push the share button. And um, uh, we just know all is all is well. Actually, uh, I see we have some folks that are on YouTube that came in through YouTube. And so we're praying that um, they will be able to um, get in on um, get in with us on Facebook too as well. And so with that said, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Lindsay if he would be so kind as to open us up with a word of prayer. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, audience. Good afternoon, panelists. Let us pray. All wise and eternal God, our Father, we come to you in this afternoon hour. We come thanking you and praising you. We thank you for life, our health, our strength. We thank you for the time you've given us this day. Thank you all that you've been with us all the way until this the afternoon hour. And we thank and praise you for all your manifold blessings. God, as we prepare to discuss prayer and to, to, to commune one with another, we pray for you to be in our midst, um, make our time valuable in the sense that we touch hearts and minds and we answer questions that some might have on their minds. And we hear from the saints who are also uh, in touch with you. As we, as we discuss this topic, we pray, oh God, that you fortify us with your spirit, that you guide us by your light and that you keep us with your guiding hand. Not only bless our discussion tonight, but bless our world, oh God. Continue to bless all the people who dwell therein, those who believe in you 
and we pray especially for those who don't believe in you. It's in the name of Jesus we offer this prayer, and for his sake we always pray. Amen. 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 Well, God is good. And one thing we know is that God is good all the time. And he continues, he continues, he continues to answer our prayers. And one thing he tells us is that we got to always pray. Amen. And, you know, we sometimes we try to get away from it. But the Bible says that we ought to always pray. And so just as a brief summary, if we could just start off maybe with just a, you know, just a, just a little discussion here. Um, and I think we kind of talked about it on last week, but I want to pose the question again, just as a review, in a sense, to open this up. And that question is, what exactly what, what is prayer? What, what is prayer? And guess what? I have y'all muted. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. What is prayer? Uh, well, um, just a recap. Uh, prayer is a general communication between humans and spiritual beings, as I was saying. Uh, what is um, and for believers, it's our direct communication between us and God. It's our time, we, you know, we go give thanks to God, we give honor to God, talk to him like a best friend, um, tell mm -hmm. him how we love him, tell him how we need him, and things of that nature. So it's when we go into the great presence of God, it's going before the throne of God, Um Prayer is a spiritual weapon. It's, it's much benefit from prayer. Um, yeah, prayer is part of the key to our life. Yeah, oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. And as we used to say in our church, uh, a, a little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. No prayer, no power. And we and we discussed that in fullest in its fullest last week. Hey. Amen. Reverend Brown is here with us. All right, all right. I tell you, I'm uh, trying to maneuver a couple things here because uh, <laughs> um, it seems like uh, trying to get this thing off here. I don't think we're coming on. Um, I don't think it's showing on my page quite yet on. Um, Facebook, so I'm I'm still maneuvering with this, you know, trying to get this thing to uh, to work here. Okay, so let me let me let me pose a, another question to you, and it's going to lead into um, our subject for tonight. Okay, hey, Apostle, uh, hey. how hey. you doing tonight? God bless, God bless, God bless, God bless, God bless. Really to be here. Thank you. We, we, we're glad that you were able to make it on with us. You know, we have the same thing going on with us again this week um, in terms it's not coming up on Facebook, but it's showing up on um, on YouTube here. OK, it's not It's not uh, the broadcast. Yeah. Somehow it's not coming through on Facebook, even though I see it on my Facebook page. But I don't think I'm not I'm not able to share it even though i have it down as a um a public share here so we, we just gonna move on because i'll be able to post it um later on okay here, here's another question i want to pose to you all and i don't think we really got into this last week but are there different types of prayer are the what are some of the different types of prayer that we have out here what are some of the different types of prayer? Prayer of confession, prayer of thanksgiving, prayer of prayer of protection. Protection, yeah. Healing, deliverance, mm -hmm. um, consecration, forgiveness, repentance. Mm -hmm. So there are there different times that we should, you know, the different situations dictate 
Sure. Uh, in terms of, you know, um, what we should do. Sure. <laughs> you know, if, if you go and your mom for uh, uh, $5, you certainly don't want to get a dollar, you see. So I always, in whatever it is that you ask for, you need to be specific. So you need to find not only the prayer, but you need to find the word of God that meets or suits your need. And that is what you need to pray. Pray the word of God because God is his word. He is his word and he's going to honor his word. And he doesn't have a problem with us bringing him in remembrance of his word. As a matter of fact, he tells us to do God ain't scared of us. He ain't no punk now. So let us not even think that, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. We can ask God we can to him. Uh, I was sharing with them this morning. You, you, whatever's in your heart, God already knows it. So you, you might as well go get on and, and tell him, you know, talk to him just like you would a friend. Your friend knows what the struggle is that you're going through, but yet your friend listens to you, a good friend. And even though they know that you're going to repeat that thing over and over and over again, they listen. They listen because they are your friend. And they pretty much know what you're already going to say before you say it. But they listen. Jesus is the same way. He says, I call you friend, servant. But I call you friend, friend. Because I've shared with you some things. Not as a servant, but as a friend. I had a, a best friend called Sussa. Um, she named me Sussa. And every morning, sister and I will call one another. Today, I will call her. Tomorrow morning, she will call me. But sister and I talked about children, marriages, mothers, and siblings, church, everything. We talked about everything. And even though I pretty much knew some of the things sister was going to say, she knew some of the things I was going to say. But yet, we listen every morning. Do you not know Jesus eagerly sits and waits to listen to what we have to say? He's just waiting on us to come. Just talk to him. Just talk to him. So yes, there are different types of prayers. And it would as believers for us to search to find those different types of prayers. and Or to have a platform like this where you get to discuss them and, and people get to write them down. So they have nowhere to go to get them. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Only, only you, only you, only you, Dr. Simmons, only you. Go to God, <laughs> glory. Amen. Amen. I'm excited. We're on. <laughs> we're on. We're on. You on Facebook? <laughs> yeah, we're on. We, we're on that, both of our platforms now. Praise God. I know y'all was praying. I tell you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, boy, this is our third week that we have been experiencing some problems. Thank you. Thank you, Apostle. Let me um, I, look. Anybody want to add or tap into that? No, I totally agree with what she said. If you need strength, you pray for strength. If you need faith, you ask the Lord. Um, you know, it's different kind of prayers for different situations. And um and the word is our God. The examples in the word um, when people had went through different situations and the way they prayed for them. So I totally agree with Apostle. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. How about you, Dr. Lindsay? You have anything agree, you want to add there? I, I agree with both, but also uh as, as we mature in Christ and in, in our walking relationship with Christ and God, that we uh, we discussed a few of the the specific types of prayers, but as we as we mature, we have to un understand and know when to pray certain prayers. Because you know, as, as when we were younger and as we were going through in Christ, you would ask a person to pray for something, and they would pray this overarching prayer, and you say, "Well, I just ask him to pray for the food," but they start praying for all the sick and. The, People in war-torn countries, it was just good. But as 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 all three of you holy ladies have said, there's specific prayers for specific situations. We know that God knows our heart and He hears all prayers. 
But we have to grow to a maturity that if people ask us to pray for the sick or bless the food, then we should specifically pray for that. You know, you the same thing. And that, that's one thing that we should always keep in our mind. They, they didn't have that back then, Dr. Nancy. They, they had the old mentality where everything was lumped together, see? But we've grown up now, see? And so we're, we're, we're eating the meat of the word. Grandma used to say, eat the meat and throw the bones out, spit the bones out. So that's what we're doing. We, we, <laughs> the meat of the word, you know, so we've developed, we've grown. And I think each generation grows a little more in the knowledge and the will of God, each generation. And, and because we're born wiser, the Bible says, but we're still weaker. Each generation becomes weaker, but they're wiser. Look at, look at the young people, look at how they can take a cell phone. And, and before you know it, the thing is programmed. Give it to uh, a, a year old. And I'm telling you, they making calls, and you're like, who are you talking to? You know, I'm I'm amazed. I'm amazed. But they're weaker. They're weaker. They have no stability. They have no hold. They fall to pieces at a drop of the hat. So that's where we come in to hold them up. See, while, while they got the technology, we got the foundation. We got the assurance. Ah, uh, the psalmist says, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Ah, God. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Ah, Shabbat. Oh, God. See, so we got that. We got that. We got that foundation. And so what worked for our grandparents, we found out, you know, grandma would start praying these prayers, you know, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, she was doing, preparing dinner. And I decree and declare they lasted all the way up until we got ready to go to bed. I know they did. She was still talking to Jesus. I'm like, Grandma, where is Jesus? I know she gets on Jesus' nerves. <laughs> Grandma was doing some serious talking to Jesus, you hear me? So she included everything. The people down the street, round the block, the mailman, the 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 the, the, the un whoever, she included them. But we know a little more. And so we can be a little more direct in our prayer approach. Now, this generation that's coming after us, um, that's going to be a little more direct than we are. See? But they're going to be a little more weak than we are. So as we develop in, in, in our knowledge and power of who God is, we learn better so we do better. But it's the foundation that we build upon and what the foundation is prayer. That's the basic. That that is it. That's the key. That's what we're building. So as long as we keep building upon that, I think that as a born as born again believers, we grow, we develop, we become more powerful. Uh we take authority over things now. It used to be a time back when the saints of God would pray, uh, well, you know, I time for God to take me on home. And they would just lay down and prepare God to take them on home. Now we are binding and rebuking. You know, we, hmm. <laughs> hey, God. So we yeah. learn, you know, we do better. A little more. A little more Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I'm going to look over here at our chat line um, and we're on Facebook now. So you can certainly turn on to Facebook and push that uh, share button button because I don't think you're really able to do it on YouTube and the like button. Push the love button. And if you have any comments or any questions that you might want to pose to our panelists, please do so. Um, but I just want to send out some shout outs. Can uh, Kenyatta? is on and Lariva's on and Pastor Wright is on, Dr. Um, Gwen is on. Hey, everybody, Dr. Uh, um, uh, Charlene, Reverend Charlene is on. 
And um, I see we're blessed this food, Lariva says, and the hands that prepared it. Amen. Yeah, I know you're not just talking about the food we put on the table, but we need to make sure that we eat the spiritual food too as well. Amen. Oh, okay. Thank, thank you, Bishop Wright. So you can share on YouTube as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Okay. So now I have another question I want to pose to our panelists. Is prayer ever enough or when is prayer enough? I don't think I don't think there's a time when prayer is not enough. Um, I don't I know. The Bible says what they always pray and not pray. Isn't that what the word says? That's what the word. That's what the word says. Well, we have to understand the word, and, and if the word is saying, then I, that is what all we have. So I don't. I think you know all day long, thanks to praying all day long, situations are happening, and sometimes you know you're just walking along talking to God. You find yourself, you know, uh, 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 one, one of the kids might come in with a situation and, you know, next thing you know, you, you're talking to God. Uh, my kids used to walk up and say, um, Mama, who are you talking to? Don't worry about it, baby. I used to say, you know, don't even worry. Don't even worry about it. But, but I don't think there's ever a time when prayer is enough. Um. Because we all ne always need, need God. We always show us the way. So prayer can never be enough. Okay. Anybody want to tag into that? I do. Um, it depends on the situation because sometimes we got to fast. Sometimes prayer, you know, we prayer is not enough. Um, in Mark 9, 20 and 29, when the uh, disciples had asked Jesus why they couldn't cast out the spirit, out the little boy, Jesus said, this type comes out only but by fasting and prayer. So, you know, right. through fasting and prayer, you know, we gain power in prayer. We get greater right. anointing in prayer. We get strengthened in prayer. Uh, we get broken in prayer. We gain focus in prayer. We get greater authority in prayer and fasting. All together, both together, prayer and fasting. When we put those two together, you become stronger and the Lord, there's something about that fast and it breaks yokes, you know, things happen. And so Jesus gave them that specific instruction on fasting and praying because we sacrifice, we die to our flesh, we die to ourselves, you know, and then we grow in the spiritual because if we're going to fast, then we'd be seeking the Lord in his word, getting stronger in the Lord. In the power of his might, you know, and that's shutting off other things. That's, um, you know, it's a lot that we can do in fasting, uh, starting with not eating and, you know, how we do our fasting and then shutting off other things to be closer to God. Sometimes it takes um, actions because the Bible says that faith without works is dead. So if we pray about it and we don't put no works into it. Some things ain't going to happen. We can't just sit there and say, well, I want this or I'm going to do that or this, that, and the third. And then just sit there and say, okay, God. You know, he like, no, you got to get up and put some effort to it. You got to put some action to that word, to that prayer that you're asking for. So sometimes we do have to um, have to fast and pray. And the word says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, humble ourselves and pray, seek my face and turn from my wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal the land. So just because we pray and heal the land, no, it's taking more than that humbling ourselves and pray, seeking his face and turning from wicked ways. All of those things has to happen for God to hear um, from heaven, forgive our sins and heal the land. So it's a lot of instructions in the word. If it was that easy just to pray, then that's all we'd be doing. And I agree with Apostle. I pray all day. I could sit there and thought about prayer yesterday. I said, you know, because prayer is our conversation with God. We're speaking to God. You know, I'm always talking to God. I, I, I know I talk to him. She say, she get on his nerve. I know I talk to him. Oh, my goodness. I thank God for his listening ear that he's not like man. Because somebody would have probably said, be quiet. I've heard it before. But I can keep on talking and keep on talking to him. And he keep on listening. Like, that, just listening, listening to what I'm saying. But I'm always bringing everything before God. So, yeah, we need action. 
We need change. We need obedience. We need to move. We need to move. You know, it's a lot of things that we can do. So sometimes, no, sometimes prayer is enough, but sometimes prayer is not enough. And just moving in God's timing, you know, um, God said that um, um, he wants to be obedient in time. Time is of the essence, doing things in a timely fashion. You know, it's a lot of sacrifice um, that needs to happen in our lives as well in order for God to move. So, you know, just reading God's word and seeing what God wants us to do, then we'll know whether we need to pray or whether we need to be fasting with the prayer or what it is that we need to be doing. But it so much is given, much is required, is what the word says. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Dr. Lindsay, did you want to add anything on? Uh, I, I agree with uh, the two panelists and just wanted to add one uh, other thing. And I think you all know that 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 prayer is our, our chief weapon, but is not the only weapon. As a, as Prophet Wright said, and as Apostle Brown has said, uh, uh, we talking to seek what the commander has, and then the commander in chief have for us. But we have to do other things because some people try to use prayer as a crutch. Well, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna sit here and pray. And you hear, you've heard people say that, and I agree with the prophetess. A, a God is a God of action. He's always working. He, even as the four of us are talking, God is behind the scenes working, keeping the universe in, in, in tow, and also uh, uh, answering the prayers of the saints. So, prayer is is something that we should do without ceasing but should not be the only thing. We got to use other weapons. We got to use our faith. We got to use also our perseverance. We got to use the knowledge that God has given each one of us to bring to bear what we are praying for as well. Because uh, uh, one minister, one pastor often says, God has a part and we have a part. Uh, uh, we can't do God's part and God surely will not do our part. So, so when, when you see people saying, I've, I've, I've filled out my application and now I'm just praying and I want God to give me this job. No, no. Those are two things you can do, but there are other things that are necessary for God to bring your dream to fruition. And so God is not a lazy God. He's, he's, he's an action God. And he wants his people to be action people. He wants all of us to work. So, you know, prayer is one part. Work is one part. Faith is one part. I, I like the fasting is one part. Because a lot of Christians leave that out, saying, well, God don't really want us to give up food and all that other stuff. You know, we, we don't have to do that. But if his word said that, that's his command. We, we, we can't negate that. So, so pray, we, we got to always pray. But that's not the only thing we should do. We, we, are, we are people of action because he's given us arms, he's given us legs, he's given us eyes. And we know that all of those things are, are, are dedicated to God. He has no feet but our feet, no hands but our hands. He has no heart but our heart, no eyes but our eyes. So we have to use all the, all the, the, the weapons at our access to, to, to live the holy life God will require us to live. All right, all right, all right. Amen. Well, I see um, Pastor McCall is, uh, is on and he says, faith without works is dead. And so, you know, a lot of people say, well, I'm just gonna pray about it and that's it. But, you know, we gotta put some feet and some hands onto um, those words and, and petitions unto God as relates as it relates to prayer, and we got to believe it, <laughs> and which takes us to the next, uh, my next question here. How do you pray hardest when it's hardest to pray? Well, I need you, at first, I must have misinterpreted your first question that you asked, because I thought you asked if if prayer is enough. You know what? What was your question? What was your first question? It that that was it, and it 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 expanded. Was prayer enough? Okay, all right. When should or, we? Know? Or, or or no no. I asked when is prayer enough? I think is prayer ever enough? 
is prayer ever enough? And uh -huh. you, answer, you, you hit the beginning of it. Okay, yeah, my answer to that is no. Prayer is not never enough. I mean, there's always other stuff, but prayer is the key. That's the foundation that Dr. Lindsay opened us up on. Uh, we're talking about prayer. Uh, so prayer is the key. Faith unlocks the door, but we got to stand on prayer. Uh, going to, to your next question of when, when situation arises, uh, how do you pray? Sometimes, depending on where you are, who you are, um, everybody don't get it. There's different levels of growth, different levels of maturity. Um, how do you encourage a newborn in Christ to pray and believe the same thing that you a believer that's prayed for 20 and 30 years? How, how do you do that? How do you do that? Because they don't have what you have. They don't, they don't have the experience, first of all. So, so, so how do you encourage that, that new, that newborn, that newborn babe in Christ um, who, who's going through a tragic situation right now? How do you encourage them? Uh, they don't have what you have. They don't know anything about fasting. They don't know anything about laying there, up there, plate aside. Don't know anything about speaking in tongues. They don't know any of that. But they've heard what you said about how God does he and answer prayer. And so as believers, we, we got to start them right there. And one of the things that I love about God is that God is so gentle with us mm -hmm. that he will start us right there and say, Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. I love that that uh, song that that lady sings in Body God uh, when she, she sings that I'm not a singer. Y'all know I, even though I sing in the mass choir, I'm not a singer. But <laughs> but I, I, I love that how she portrayed her depths of her soul at a point in time when she knew she had done something wrong and she could not correct that thing. She could not bring it back. What do you do? All she knew was that Jesus loved her in spite of it all, in spite of it all. So I may not be able to tell them, okay, well, now's the time for you to fast. Now is the time for you, you to um, have faith. You know, be patient, wait on the Lord, be of good cheer. They don't want to hear any of that because they're going through. And I got to get them to the next step. Just the next step, baby. Just the next step. How, how do we do that? All right. So how do we, how do, how do we, how do, I know I've been in, in um, some situations myself when, um, uh, when it was just like really hard to pray. I mean, I've been on my bed of, of affliction, uh, sick bed of affliction. And it was just, you know, it was just really, really hard to pray. And I can't say that I was able to, to um, persevere in, in prayer during that particular time. But how, how, how do we do that to add on? Anybody want to add on? Um. Faith comes out hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I can just give a testimony of, you know, um, I remember starting as a, a babe and not really understanding, you know, God's word, not really, you know, having the faith and belief. You know, you have to start from somewhere, you know, and when people watch us and they see the things that we do, they learn from those things. And like she said, what we can do is just try to give them, you know, a word. Um, but for myself, and I just want to give a testimony of, you know, how um, I learned to persevere in prayer and pray when I'm going through suffering, if I may. Um, when it's the hardest time, because that's the hardest time is when I'm going through suffering for us to pray. So it's a story behind the way I pray. Um, you know, I would have to say definitely through spiritual growth and through studying um, God's word and uh, personal experiences with suffering and coming to understand some of the ways of God and the way that I think about suffering is the key to my prayer. 
to my prayer life. I can't really tell you about nobody else, but I can tell you about mine. Um, in time of suffering, I go to God's word, as um, Apostle said earlier about going to God's word. And the word for me doing suffering is Psalm 34 and 19. It's my go-to scripture that many are the affliction of the righteous. And I, I love that scripture during that time because if we can understand that we're going to go through um, and that we're going to suffer at times, it's important to understand when we go into prayer, you know, those things like we heard the word, we've spoken the word, we've given people that word, but have we received that word for ourselves? Because, you know, when we suffer, we can, uh, sometimes you can't get past some of the things that seem wicked that happened to us. You know what I'm saying? That seemed like a wicked thing that happened, for instance, during the pandemic, um, COVID. A lot of Christians couldn't understand why they suffered COVID, why mm -hmm. they caught COVID. They felt like they were failed by God, like God failed them because they're children of God. And things like this is not supposed to happen, right? We're not supposed to get plagues and, you know, pestilence and all those things like that because we're children of God and because we declare Psalms 91, which we should pray God's word and believe God's word for us. And that was the word for that time. But people forget or don't know Psalms 34 and 19 that says many are the affliction. So I think it's what you're taught, you know, when you're in church and if they're just telling you the, the goodness of God and this and the third, but not telling you that you're going to suffer and go through. When you go through things like this, then you feel like you've been lied to and you've been wrong. And that's what makes it hard for people to pray and go in the presence of God because they feel like something ain't right with this picture right here. I shouldn't have this, you know. And then you got people challenging you. Oh, where's your God? You got sick. You know, you know, people that didn't die from this, this, that and the third. So. You know, that is my go-to scripture in, in suffering. I learned that. That's something that I learned um, in my process. Even in the death of my son, the first two days were my, how did this happen? Why did this happen? How, are you serious, God? Like, I'm not, I'm not believing this because, you know, the loss of a loved one is devastating and to lose a child is something that, you have the experience to understand or relate to this thing. We can say we can relate to it, but it, you don't know until it happens to you. And I wish that don't happen to anybody, you know. So at that moment of despair, in my lowest point in prayer, my conversation with God, I was able to express my thoughts the way I really felt, you know, express my emotions, uh, my struggles. Uh, my disbelief, my misunderstanding, my devastation, my my weakness in my heart. I was able to put all those things before God, the only one that could give me strength and answers, you know. So the prayer, in prayer, um, along with the prayers of the righteous, praise God for the prayers of the righteous that were interceding on my behalf on the third day, the Lord gave me supernatural strength supernatural so i'm gonna say supernatural this only came from the throne of grace strength that he gave me i'm telling you i felt the power of the holy ghost the anointing of god and a joy and a peace that was unshakable and i knew it was god i was like oh god i know i know this is you you know and so i remember the goodness of god at that moment i started remembering I had those first couple of days and, you know, just in despair, like just, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling this. I'm not, I'm not getting this. But then when he gave me that resurrection power, I love talking about the third day, hallelujah. Oh, he restored me. And then I remembered in my prayer, you know, that he never said that we weren't going to leave this earth. He never said that we're going to live here forever. God never said that. And Jesus said that in this world, we're going to have tribulations. So when we go into prayer at the hardest times, not just being or feeling like the victim or feeling like we're wrong or feeling bitter, we have to remember what God's words say about the affliction, about the tribulations, about the trials, you know, things that we're going to uh, have to endure when we go before him in prayer. We have to take that in prayer to him. And I take God by the truth of his word. I take him to his word. You know, yes, being a human being, I miss my son. I miss my son every day. I'm an emotional being like anybody else. Mm -hmm. I have my moments, 
-hmm. like anybody else, mm -hmm. which is to be expected. We expect it to have those moments. Um, and, you know, I have been on the floor before having moments. You know, I, I thank you, God. I, I, I just get excited because, hallelujah, it's, uh, it's something about that spiritual growth. It's something about being in the presence of God. It's something about learning God. It's something about, oh, the Holy Ghost. It's just, I love you, Lord. I thank you. I have been in the floor at times at my lowest points because, remember, I was I was diagnosed with bipolar and I was delivered. God delivered me from that. No medicines, no nothing just the power of the holy ghost his word that keep me hallelujah and it's been over about 12 years now but nevertheless i've been in the floor crying out to god before upset at first you know upset and then i get to crying and i'm crying and when i cry some when i get to a point of of despair or a point where it's so overwhelming i have a crying prayer tongue and it's arabic it's Arabic. And I can hear what I'm saying to God as I cry out, oh God, oh, you know, whatever I'm saying, I can hear what I'm saying in Arabic. I can interpret what I'm saying to God. And I cry and I cry. And so in prayer, we need to cry at our hardest time. If you want to cry, cry. If you want to fall down, sometimes I want to be like a big old baby just taking a have a table tantrum. Do what you got to do because that's what God expects. Well, you know, he expects us to go through some things. Hallelujah. And when I go through those moments and times and just feel like just giving up and I ain't going to make it, I remember God's word. I remember what God has shown me. And then I remember other people like Paul who said he was given a thorn in his flesh and he sought the Lord three times to remove it. And God said, my grace is sufficient enough. So then I start thinking, my grace is sufficient that means my grace is enough it could be worse so god i thank you mm -hmm. it could be worse than this when i look at the life of job i lost one child but you ain't take them all hallelujah and what people don't know i am going to testify for i'm going to tell it uh dr simmons because last time before we got on the broadcast i got a vision the lord showed me one of my sons running for his life and i stopped and i prayed hallelujah you saw the power of prayer on here and i stopped and i prayed for my son and then i got a call that somebody was shooting at my son and one of my sons had six bullets in his car and none of them touched him the power of prayer god is so good when i look at things that things could be they could be worse in the grace of god i always look at the goodness of god and dwell on what god has shown me what only god have done you know his good outweigh the things that we might think is bad but none of it is bad it's just god's will and god's way so in prayer and i'm gonna go ahead um it 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 lets it lets god know that i can't do this on my own mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know i i i bring god into remembrance of his words you said many are the affliction of the righteous but you'll deliver us you said when we are weak you are made strong you said those that wait on the lord you'll renew their strength you are my hiding place and my fortune blessed are those that mourn for they shall be comforted i bring them back to his word and that he'll never leave me nor forsake me I, that's i know he's faithful and he's true he can do anything but fail so i, I just give god the, the 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 glory because in my hardest time he gives me peace he gives me hope and he gives me strength and that don't mean that's gonna be my last time of going through but i know i can go back to god and i can trust god in his word thy kingdom come thy will be done be god, god does it amen Amen. 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 What a powerful testimony. Right in the midst of our broadcast, this was going on the last go round. <laughs> and yeah. we were talking about prayer. <laughs> and she started praying early. The Lord put it in her spirit early. I, I was thinking about a, a scripture found in Psalms 119, 11. It says, I have hid your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. And I know that I mentioned that it was times that I couldn't pray. And I praise God that the word was already in my heart and it was even illuminating. It was taking me through some time because there's going to be some times when you can't get a prayer out. And then I heard Pastor um, Prophetess Deneen say that she cried out. Sometimes all you can do is just cry. And the scripture says, the Lord hears our cry. I'll cry. No, I was crying a couple of weeks ago. Mm. All I could do was say, Jesus. Mm. I didn't because I didn't know what to say. All I could say was just Jesus. I started praying for myself. Help me. Yeah. I should have been praying for the situation. I think, and 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 they told me this is actually was my son. And actually said, Ma, I think it, you know, it, it may if you hadn't been praying, it was 
it was pretty bad, but he said it probably would have been worse. So Thank sometimes you. all you can do is just call, you know, just call out the name of Jesus. And then sometimes you don't know what to pray. Then the Lord will take us into our spiritual language because he knows and it comes out through his utterances. And so God is good. Help me. Uh, Pastor McCall said, help me. Yes, help. <laughs> help. And you know, I, I'm always reminded of my mother. She had the most powerful prayer. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was stricken. Y'all have heard this testimony before with a stroke 20 years um, and really couldn't speak that well. But her prayer was always, Lord, have mercy. And I think somebody on him mentioned God's grace and his mercy. That's all she she could utter out. You understood that Lord have mercy. OK. Mm. Anybody look, this time goes by fast. We got, let me see what we got going on here. We got 10 more minutes left. Look, push that share button for us. And um, if you have any comments that you want to put in here, we just write them in your chat here. I have another question. Um, uh, anybody else have any testimonies and how does prayer help us during our hard, hardest times of suffering? Anybody? Now, I, I wanted to ask a question. You know, I know the time is, is far spent, but I was I was ministering to one of our members about a, a, a week ago. And, and, and I'm glad I got I got three ladies on, on, on the panelists. Uh, this 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 one of our members had had, had lost and had lost her daughter, and uh, this daughter was fairly young, but she 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 developed cancer, and then uh, the, the the woman prayed, and and and, and as you all know that that her prayers were not answered in terms of God releasing her daughter from the cancer, but it, it, it overpowered it, and and. Funny thing, I had met her in the cleaner, and she said, oh, you're from such and such. I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, I know you. I said, oh, well, I, I want to know you better. But she said, you know, I lost my daughter. And that thing hit me. And I said, well, I'm going to pray for you, right? I'm going to pray for you right now, and we're going to continue to pray for you. But to make the story short, I, I, I called her. This When I met her, that was this past summer it was it was may or june but then i called her in october and she was still going through and i, I like what uh, the prophetess wright said I, I i was searching for for things to encourage i said well you know you know i know you, you may appear to be mad with god because you prayed for something and god didn't answer that i say god is big god is not little he, he, he don't mind us getting mad with him. You know, he's not like humans. That When you get mad with a human, you expect them to come back on you. I said, God understands that because he understands your nature. And, and, and as I tried to, to really encourage, I was trying to search for words. Everything I, I, I seem to have said to a, a, a prophetess right said it. And I said, well, that was a confirmation. I said, well, at least I told her what the things I knew and I felt because I, I I I never lost a daughter. I never lost a child. So I, on the one hand, I couldn't minister correctly to her because I I didn't know how she was really feeling. But she she wanted me to say that if she continues to pray to God, it's gonna be all right. And I said, you said it. it it's gonna be all right. I said. It, I know you're you're angry and you're mad and all those kind of feelings are going through because your daughter's gone. But you got to realize God kept you and He kept your other children. And the, the the thing for us is not to lose faith in God, but to continue to pray. And that's what I told her. And I I, I thank you very much, Providence, because I said I didn't know if that was enough for her, but I, I said you just got to keep praying. You you can't give up on God because you think he didn't answer you one time. Because, you know, I, I call those sunshine Christians. When you pray to God and he don't answer, then you say, okay, I'm done. 
Well, well you're, not a real, you're not really a child of God if you think that God is at our beck and whim, that we pray and he answers our prayers. That's, that's not our relationship with God. The relationship is for us to pray and to get stronger in him so that he, he allows us to bear the things that are unbearable, like you said, like you, you holy women have said in, in your discourse, that, that sometimes we, we don't know what to pray for because the pain is so great. But we know that God keeps us in times of that pain. And, and I just wanted to thank you for letting me know that at least I hope she heard that, that you just got to keep praying. You can't, you can't give up. Is that reasonable, lady? Amen. What about when when your prayer is not being answered? Yeah, yeah. When your prayer is not being answered, because she prayed that God for God not to take her daughter, and you know, okay. he actually took her daughter. So she she thought, okay, you didn't you didn't answer my prayer. So she became angry, and I and and, and she she tried to pull away from God. And so someone said that you should talk to this lady. But as I talked to her, I could see her strength growing anyway. That, that, that I think they were worried about it. But, I, but after I talked to her, I said, you got it. You, got, you just got to keep trusting and believing and having faith in God and praying, too. I, and, just mm -hmm. adding on, yeah, I, you know, and I think that that was, um, the, you know, the uh, comment that you shared with her, I, I think that that was right on point there. And, you know, as we grow in, in Christ, we, we understand that God did answer our prayer. And a lot of times we don't, we, he may not have given us the answer that we wanted um, at that particular time. We may not be able to understand it, but by and by it, this other scripture, another scripture says, for all things work together for the good of them called according to his purpose. And so further on down the road, the, 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 the answer, the final answer may come through the things working together for the good. So we don't, we don't know the benefits. And you know, one interesting thing is I can remember when my mother passed and right before she passed and she too had was diagnosed with cancer in the very end, but her whole, the day that she was transitioning, which I didn't know that that's what was going, was, was going on with her. And I thought God was healing her and on, in the natural, on this side of glory, her pressure was perfect. Her pressure hadn't been perfect in over 20 years. She had no pain. She had started back talking and all of this. And what I believe God was doing was he was at that point uh, giving her a glorified body mm. and that he was healing her on this side. He actually healed her mm. in preparation for her to take her journey. Mm. God gave me that in the, in, in the spirit. I, there's no place I read that, but I'm serious. Everything, everything went was just come i said oh god is doing a miracle i just couldn't believe it and later on that night she closed her eyes but i think god was was preparing her body for preparing her with a glorified body in him mm -hmm. and the more that we stay on track and stay in this journey and the more that we're around even as uh, Apostle Brown was sharing about encouraging others that may be just begin beginning. I mean, there's two on the on the panelists now that have lost sons, tragically. And that, not that you over it, because Apostle, your son was killed how many years ago? Uh, my son was, was killed 24 years ago. Okay. At the age of 30, he was gunned down by a co-worker while working at UPS. Um, was I mad at God? Yes, I was. I was very angry at God. And it took the saints of God at that time to rally around me to get me to where I needed to be. I was angry with him. I remember I was in the midst of preaching a revival. 
And I was like, oh, I'm not doing this. This is no, I'm not doing this. And I heard my son say, mama is one soul greater than the next. And I'm like, boy, why are you asking me this? But my son had a will. And what my daughters and I talked about was sometimes our will is not their will. My son was a, a man, man. He was a person that moved about. And so for him to have been on planet Earth, needing anybody to take care of him, that just was not going to happen. That was, that was just not going to happen. And so even though my will was one thing, that was not his will. He was old enough for his will to be recognized. And that was his will. No, because I stood over top of my son and I said, your word said, God, that whatsoever I ask in your son Jesus' name, oh, you got to do it. You do it. He said, but that's not his will. So if you let me have him at his will, you'll see him again. Because three days prior to that, my son sat in my car and confessed Christ. He said, yo, my mama said that you will save my soul. I need you to save me. So I was done. I was done. And it took Aliti and all of them back then, all of New Mexico, to get me through that thing. Because that was my only son. My only mm. son. My only son. I didn't have mm. enough. My only. And that boy mm. loved his And that was the other thing. I was ready to shut down. I, God, you and I got to talk. And see, I, that's how I talk to God. I don't know about how anybody else talk. You and I need to talk because something's wrong with this picture here. What's going on? What are we doing here? And and what what's happening? What, what are we doing, God? And he had to let me know. That was his will. That wasn't your will. I couldn't go against this will. See, God is never going to go against our will. That's what we have to understand. And so to encourage somebody to go through, sometimes you just got to, come on, baby, let's just step up on the next step because that's what they did to me. Come on, let me walk with you. They drug me everywhere. Every time I turn around, some 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 conference or some uh, retreat, Alethea was dragging me off to, come on, let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go there. I think they drugged me mm. into leaving and restoring my faith again. Uh, but I bless the Lord for the body. That's what we got to do. Recognize one another. We got to recognize pain. We got to recognize when somebody needs help. We got to recognize when we need to come to somebody's rescue. Don't see them out there dying and you don't give them a helping hand. Don't just say, well, you got to get it like I got it. Or, you know, you got to believe like, no, they may not be able to believe like you believe. But come on, baby, let's go. Let's go. You got to recognize where people are, what they need when they need it. The body of Christ. If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves, pray. So they ain't ready to pray and seek, their, seek the Lord. But we are. So mm -hmm. for those who know the word and know the word to God, we got to do what it takes. We got to carry this world, this, 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 this band of believers to the next level. It is up to us. If it's to be done in the earth, it's got to be done by who? Us. Jesus done sat down at the right hand of the Father. He ain't taking uh, Miss Mary no medicine. He ain't putting shoes on Johnny's feet. He ain't buying no bus passes for the board. It's just job. We got to do it. We got to do it the same way we got to pray through. And that's why the prayers of the righteous are very much. much. So righteous, baby. Mm -hmm. They may be still living with somebody, crawling up out of somebody's bed. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm that's real talk. We don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we 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 about talking real. You know, <laughs> this 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 broadcast is is you know it's about telling the truth and being real. Guess what, y'all? Time is up. Okay. In fact, we have gone over, <laughs> but we're we're still in the will of will of God. Um, but I do want to be um, courteous of people's um, of of their time and again exciting exciting uh discussion here do you all think that you all can kind of wrap it up and maybe like uh 30 seconds as we um go around and then i'm gonna ask um prophet is right 
If we'll end with you, Prophet, is right. If you'll close this out in prayer, that'll be good. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> 30 seconds. Um, 30 seconds. Uh -huh. I, I like what Apostle Brown said. The will of God is everything. And, and when we get that in our spirits, I think that's what we need more than anything to understand God's will is not our will. That's is his will. His will be done throughout all the earth and the heavens. Amen. 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 Apostle, your parting words for tonight, I should say. I bless the Lord on all that's within me. Listen, all I know how to do on praying. And I just believe we God, whatever God giving you in this season, hear it, do it, and just keep it moving. God don't tell you to do it, don't do it. Or doing it. That don't mean you need to do it. Hear from God, saints of God, those of you who know the worth of prayer, those of you who are piggybacking, ride until you get to where you need to be. God bless. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Prophet is right. You can close this out. Okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your holy name. We just magnify you. We adore you, Lord God, for you are amazing, almighty in all of your ways, Lord God. Father, we can do nothing without you. So we give you the glory before we even ask for anything. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I just want to lift up all of those who are experiencing any kind of suffering in this hour. We're talking about uh, the power of prayer, Lord God, but anyone that is dealing with uh, sickness or a uh, lack of daily needs or broken heartness or uh, unforgiveness, the loss of a family member, persecution, false accusations, people that are jobless, homeless, Lord God, any manner of stress, any situation or circumstance beyond man's control, Lord God. Father, we ask that you would give them strength to endure. We ask that you would give them strength to stand, gird up their lawns, Lord God. Let your light shine in darkness in the name of Jesus. And I bind up, oh God, uh, uh, any depression and anxiety and frustration and suicidal thoughts, ungodly weaknesses, Lord God, and sickness, Lord God, uh, brokenness and heavy weight, Lord God, everything that's against your kingdom, Father God, I come against it, Lord God. And Father, I pray that your spirit will overwhelm them, Lord God, that your precious Holy Spirit will breathe new life into them, Lord God, will heal and restore and give them regeneration, Lord God, peace, hope, love, joy, oh God, in every bit of you, Father God, we thank you that we can depend on you. We thank you for being a source of our strength lord god and it's in jesus name that we pray amen and amen 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 thank you panelists love you all what a wonderful evening amen and to our listening audience god bless you all ask our panelists to hang in there with us for a second and until we see you all again the next time bye bye